Shalom, most high in Christ blessed. I'm Officer Asa out of IUIC Chicago, and I'm here with... This is Officer Yokanan. Shalom. This is Officer Judah, most high in Christ blessed. All right, we back again, all right, with another series. All right, what is this series? What is we going into? Foul and Unclean Spirits, Part 1, Sodomy. Why are we going through this topic? We must understand how this is being forced upon our people. And those of you who may struggle with that, we're going to go through some things to help you and better understand how you got to that point. All right. So first, the first thing we're going to touch on, first and foremost, God is against sodomy. Understand that. Let's get first John three and four. The book of First John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Read it again from the top. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. So why am I going here? We first have to understand what sin is. Because remember the first thing that I said, God is against sodomy. Sodomy is a sin. So what this verse is telling us is whoever commits sin, they transgress the law. Transgress means to break, go against, oppose God's laws. Sodomy does all of that. Read on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is when you break God's laws. Sodomy is against God's laws. Understand that. It ain't about what you feel, what you think. We have to go off what God says. From there, go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Because right now we are setting the stage. God is against sodomy. I can't say it enough. They're pushing that on our children. Some of you are meddling with that. Some of you came from that. You must understand the judgments of God. Give me Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23. Uh-huh. For the wages of sin is death. Uh-huh. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Read it again from the top. For the wages of sin is death. When you go to work, you get a wage. The wage is your payment. So the Bible is telling us what? The payment for sin is death. And if you just recently watched Bishop Nathaniel's class, The Keys to the Lake of Fire, I may be saying it wrong, you understand what this death is. This is second death. This is damnation. This is torment. This is everlasting torment. If you do not repent of that, if you do not stop meddling with that vile sin, you will receive that second death. Read on. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. That is what each and every one of us should be striving for. Eternal life, not eternal damnation. But that is what you will, will receive if you do not repent. From there, give me Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. Because we may have some people, this is their first time watching the class, and, and they like, how are you saying sodomy is a sin? And I'm saying sodomy. Let me be clear. Sodomy is same sex, same sex behavior. That is a sin against God. Now we're going to go into the law. Where said it says, plain, officer, said plain. Yes, sir. Now we're going to go into the law. Sodomy is same sex. I got to say that because I've been saying sodomy. You probably like, what is sodomy? Sodomy is same sex. Give me Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22. The book of Leviticus chapter 18. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. There you go. We ain't make that up. Read it one more time. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. A man is not supposed to have sex with another man. That is what the Bible is saying. Or a woman having sex with another woman. Read. It is abomination it is what abomination it is an abomination 
And we're going to go into what an abomination is very shortly. Read on. That's it on that? Yes, sir. Read it again from the top. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So what you got to understand, right? Now we are under grace, meaning what? We can repent. Under Moses, you had to die right there on the spot if you was in the midst of that. Now under Christ, we can repent. We can ask forgiveness for being in the midst of that vile behavior. From there, get Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. The book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Both of them have committed an abomination. When you indulge in same-sex behavior, brothers and sisters, that is an abomination. An abomination is a vile, disgusting thing in the eyesight of God. Read on. What was the punishment under Moses? Read. They shall surely be put to death. You had to physically be put to death. Because if you understand the old covenant, we had to sacrifice animals. There was no sacrifice for that sin. You had to die. You were the sacrifice. Now under Christ, you have grace to repent. But don't forget what we read in Romans 6.23. You continue to sin, you're going to receive that eternal punishment that the bible speaks of read on their blood shall be upon them meaning what you had to die give me colossians chapter 3 verse 5 we must repent of that spirit that's why the, the class is titled what it is foul and unclean spirits these are foul and unclean spirits that will stop you from getting to the kingdom of heaven we all say we want to go to heaven but this is something that will stop you it's a roadblock repent read the book of colossians chapter 3 and verse 5 mortify therefore your members which are upon earth which are upon the earth so it said mortify your members what is it talking about when he says members, when Paul says members, what is he saying? He said mortify. Mortify means to kill. So he said kill your members. What members? Read. Fornication. Fornication. That's sex outside of marriage. You know what falls under fornication? Sodomy. You must kill that if you have that spirit. If you are battling that, you must kill that thing inside of you. You must Mortify it. We got an image up here. Pull that image up. This is an example right here. This is an abomination in the eyesight of God. Those are two women. This should not be. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Think about it. The Bible says be fruitful and multiply. They cannot be fruitful and multiply anything. Y'all could drop that. You can say it on the mic. <laughs> read uncleanness uncleanness this is a foul and unclean spirit in the eyesight of god if it's in you you must kill that thing in you read on inordinate affection inordinate affection it's a, an affection that's out of order it's not normal you should not have feelings towards the same sex. When you look at the animals, the animals don't even operate like that. That is a vile and unclean spirit. Read on. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. That's evil sexual desire. The normal sexual desire is what? Husband and wife. All this other stuff, you got an affinity for animals. We're going to touch on that later on down the line. All those things are evil concupiscence. Read on. And covetousness. And covetousness. If when you have any of these spirits in you, you must kill these things. If you do not, they will overtake you and you will not get the kingdom of God. But read on. Read that last part. What Paul say? And covetousness. Uh-huh. Which is idolatry. You know why he said that? Because when you get engulfed in these things, you will put them all before God. 
they will become your God. That's why he said, which is idolatry. Committing these things, participating in these things that he just listed, it will become your God. It will become more important than what God says. Read on. For with things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Read that again. For which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. He said, for which things sake, because they participate in these things, the wrath of God comes upon them. Why you think they so disease written? Why you think they so confused and go through all these pains of the mind? Because they're going against God. That whole sodomite, sodomite behavior, same-sex behavior, it goes against God. That's why the wrath of God comes upon you. Read on. In the which ye also walk sometime, when ye live in them. So he was talking to who? The congregation in Colossae. He said some of y'all used to participate in these things. He said walked, meaning past tense. Meaning they change from those things. You can change from these things. But you must understand, God is against that. From there, give me the definition of mortify. Give me the definition of mortify. Definition of mortify. Pull that up real quick. Let's pull up a definition on mortify. Real quick, mortify. Let's get a definition on that word, mortify. Let's find out what it means. You've been hearing what we've been saying. It means to kill those things in you. Let's pull it up. Second definition. Mortify. Subdue the body or its needs and desires. Now, By wait. It says subdue the body or its needs and desires. This ain't talking about righteous needs and desires. It's talking about subduing desires that are not right in the eyesight of God. So if these desires are in your mind, you must subdue them, kill them. Read on. Subdue the body or its needs and desires uh -huh. by self-denial uh -huh. or discipline. By self-denial or discipline. You must discipline this flesh that you're walking in. You should rule over the flesh. It shouldn't rule over you, brothers and sisters. From there, let's go to Sirach 15 and 13. You could drop that definition. So we understand mortify means we must subdue. We must kill those things if they are in us. If you do not, you will lose out on the kingdom of God. Sirach 15, 13. The book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 13. So we've been here. God says sodomy, same sex, is an abomination. We're going to go to the scriptures, and then we're going to read the definition on that word. Read. The Lord hated all abominations. I didn't make that up. None of us have made that up. God is telling you out of his word. Read it one more time. The Lord hateth all abomination. God hates all abomination. He just said same sex is an abomination unto him. Then you just read out of the Bible. He said he hates all abomination. Give me the definition of abomination, please. Read it one more time while we get in the definition. The Lord hateth all abomination. Did it say some abomination? All abomination. He hates all abomination. Anything that God deems abominable, he hates it. Now let's see what abomination is. Read that definition. A, a thing that causes disgust or hatred. So when God sees same-sex behavior, what does it cause in him? Read. Definition. A, a thing that causes disgust. He's disgusted when he sees his sons and daughters, the chosen people of God, behaving like that. He is disgusted. Read. Or hatred. He hates seeing it. 
The Bible says, young men, we are supposed to be kings and priests. The Bible says, sisters, you are supposed to be nurturers. You are supposed to be supporting your husband. You are supposed to be having children, not laying with another woman from there. Now, you may be saying, well, the Bible don't talk about any instances of, of sodomy or same sex. It does. Now we're going to go into some examples of sodomy and what took place. How did God react when the sodomy took place? How did he react? Hey, y'all, so you mind if I say something really go quick ahead. before you go to examples? Let me give 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Because Bring it out. Sin is typically pleasurable, right? And we just read the definition about mortifying your members and, 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 and di disciplining yourself and refusing the things of your pleasures, right? But watch this. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. What does God say about sodomy? Come on. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Watch this, y'all. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So first and foremost, the unrighteous are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. What is unrighteousness? Those that break God's commandments. Those that are in sin. But watch watch this. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, uh -huh. nor adulterers, uh -huh. nor effeminate, Read. nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Read that part again. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So why did I bring this up? Because typically those that in, in, indulge into those acts, they think that it's pleasing. But the, the scriptures use the words abuse, abuse, not pleasers, but abusers. Believe it or not, when you bend yourself over and you allow another man to bend his rod inside of you, that is called sexual you are abusing yourselves. You think it's pleasurable. It's a lust, but you are abusing yourselves. Notice, and it mentioned above that, neither fornicators and adulterers, okay? Because homosexuality falls under adultery. It does fall under fornication. But he highlighted out of that abusers of themselves with mankind. Why would he do that? Because that's what it is, sexual abuse. And you think you're giving it to something that's pleasing, but it's not. And you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's it. That's out of the Bible. And you know why that's big? Why we need to focus on that? They're not teaching that in churches. In churches, they're telling you you can be however you want to be. They don't teach the word of God. They don't teach God's laws. Now, let's show some examples. Was God ever okay with that? Let's get some examples of it taking place. Give me Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. We're going to read verse 1 to 7. Then we're going to jump down in the chapter. The book of Genesis chapter 19 and verse 1. Uh-huh. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So let's paint the picture here. Two angels come to Sodom. Lot sees them, and he greets them. Let's see what these angels was coming to Sodom to do. Read. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him. Read. And entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Read on. But before they lie down, the man of the man of the city, even the man of Sodom, compassed, compassed the house round. So Go hold on. Let's stop right here for a second. When it says they compassed Lot's house, these men in Sodom surrounded Lot's house to do what? Read on. Both old and young. So these was old and young men. Read. All the people from every quarter. Uh-huh. And they called it to life. Wait, and it said all the people from every quarter. So this was a crowd of young men and old men and all the people from every quarter. What was they trying to do? Read. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Well, are the men which came into thee this night? 
Bring them out unto us that we may know them. That know that they talking about when the Bible say no, it ain't talking about get to know you like get acquainted with you. They was trying to have sex with these two angels that were men. That's why they surrounded Lot's house to try to abuse themselves, just like we read in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. They wanted to abuse themselves with mankind. Read. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after them and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. What did he say? Do not so wickedly. That is a wicked thing, brothers and sisters, to be involved in same sex. If you battle that, you need to repent or you will not get the kingdom of heaven. You see all the way back in Genesis, the beginning, this was deemed always a wicked deed. Now let's jump down to verse 12. Read verse 12 and 13, and then we're going to jump again. Read. Verse 12. And the man said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. Let me, let me make it plain. The angel said, is there any more loved ones of, of yours in this place that you care about? Is this all your family? Bring them out of this place. You got to ask yourself, why is the angel telling him, get your family and leave? Read. Well, we will destroy this place. What did the angel say? Well, we will destroy this place. The angel said, we are going to destroy this place. I'm going to leave that right there. We're going to touch on that later on. The same things going on in Sodom and Gomorrah is going on here. Let that sink in. Read on. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord have sent us to destroy it. When he said the cry of them is waxing great before us, their sins reached the heaven. It got so wicked in Sodom and Gomorrah, God said it's time to hit the delete button. It's getting so wicked here in this time in America, Babylon the Great. God is going to hit the delete button again. This time he's going to use missiles. And same-sex behavior is going on here just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Jump down to verse 23. Verse 23. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zorah. Uh-huh. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. He did what? And upon Gomorrah, the Lord re reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. He rained down fire and brimstone upon Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed it. He's going to rain down missiles on this place and destroy it because the same wicked behavior is taking place here. Read on. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the city and that which grew upon the ground. God destroyed everything in Sodom and Gomorrah. God is going to destroy everything in this place. Cut the news on. The times are getting more and more evil from there. Let's go to Judges chapter 19 and verse 22. So we saw. One example, we saw the first example of sodomy. And was God okay with it? No. He hit the delete button on a whole town, on a whole landmass, on a whole country for their wickedness. Let's get Judges 19, verse 22. The book of Judges, chapter 19 and verse 22. God is not okay with that. Read. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the man of the city, Certain sons of B Bilal. Bilal means the devil. Certain sons of the devil, because these was Israelites, but they had the devil on them. That's why they called them sons of Bilal. Read. Beset the house round about. Say, you, it's crazy. The same spirit again. Surround another man's house to do what? Read. And beat at the door. They was banging at the door to do what? Read. And spake to the master of the house, uh -huh. the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house, that we may know him. That we may what? That we may know him. That they may have sex with the man that came to the house. 
Read on. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Do not so what? Do not so wickedly. Here it is again. We in the book of Judges. That is deemed a wicked thing, brothers and sisters. I don't care if it tickle your fancy, if it makes you feel good. That is a wicked thing in the eyesight of God. Hey, y'all, so real quick, because I don't want to get past that. Look at the spirit that is on these men. Read that, read that again from the top where it spoke about them banging on the door. Go ahead. Come on. Now, verse 22. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the man of the city, certain sons of Balaam, beset the house round about uh -huh. and beat at the door. And they, they did what? And beat at the door. That's a spirit of rape. They was going to force themselves in and take those men. Bring it out. That is a rape spirit. They were going to force those men. Ain't that what homosexuals or uh, sodomites do today? Where they lie to people about their sexuality? They lie to people whether they are a man or formerly was a woman? Yep. They don't want to tell you who it is so they can convince you to have sex with them? That's the same spirit. It's a rape spirit. It is a sexual abusing spirit. Bring it out. Wicked. Wickedness. I didn't want to pass over that. Heavy point. We can't run past that. Read verse 23. Verse 23. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to mine house. Do not this folly. He said, do not so wickedly. That is a wicked deed. That is wicked behavior. Read on. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble ye, humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man, do not, do not so vow a thing. Do not so what? Do not so vow a thing. Vile a thing that is vile. Give me the definition of vow. Let's get the definition of vow. Read that again. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. So they gave these sons of Bilal a woman. They said, bro, take this woman. Read. Him I will bring out now, uh -huh. and humble ye them, and do with them what seemeth good unto you. Uh -huh. But unto this man, do not so vow a thing. That is a vow thing, brothers and sisters. You got to see that and understand that. We understand smoking crack is a vile thing, but when, we, when it comes to stuff like this, we confused. How? I just want to love who I want to know. No, God didn't make you for that purpose. That's your vile affection. Read the definition of vile. Vow, extremely unpleasant. Did it say somewhat unpleasant? Extremely unpleasant. That is extremely unpleasant in the eyesight of God. Now, let's get video one. Let's get a visual. Let's make sure we got it at that timestamp. Because for all of you supporters out there, you especially our people that's involved in this, how about some history? Let's hit ourselves. Let's hit you. Because we, we aware of this vile history that they don't teach in school. Let's hit you in the head with it because some of y'all don't participate in it, but you're a supporter. Let's get some history. Play that at the timestamp, please. White masters, in this video, we will uncover five chilling and heart-wrenching ways in which these men were forced into unimaginable acts of indecent exploitation, their sense of worth and dignity trampled upon in the name of dominance and control. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel to keep informed of our eye-opening black narrative. Number five, rape. One significant aspect of the abuse experienced by enslaved African men was the rape committed by male slave owners, merchants, and overseers. These acts occurred both in the United States and in the Caribbean, where the slave system was prevalent. 
Enslaved men were often raped on ships during the transatlantic journey, as well as at secret sex farms and seasonal plantations owned by homosexual slave owners. Stop right there! The Pause it! You up there supporting this? Talking about some I'm not going to judge them. Do you know the history behind this stuff? We just think it was the women getting raped. It said they was raping brothers on the slave ship on the way here. And you support that. You say, leave them alone. Let them be. It's okay. Meanwhile, history shows they was traumatizing black men on their way over here. And then when we got over here, it said it was same-sex slave masters. Play. Social norms of the time and the existing power dynamics these men faced numerous barriers to reporting their abuse. They often hesitated to voice their experiences, fearing retribution, further punishment, or being disbelieved. Furthermore, the notion of enslaved men being raped by other men, especially those who were married or had multiple partners, was met with skepticism and disbelief by society. So stop, Lack stop, of stop. These slave masters had wives and they was raping brothers. Raping your grandfathers. Slave master. Like when you watch Django, Mr. Candy, Calvin Candy. Imagine Calvin Candy got a wife, but he come in the slave shack taking a man. This is what was going on. Play. It's further compounded the issue. Unlike enslaved women who could become pregnant as a result of sexual violence, enslaved men did not bear visible physical signs of abuse or the ability to conceive. This lack of tangible evidence contributed to the dismissal and disbelief of their experiences. Despite these challenges, accounts and testimonies have emerged to shed light on the extent of the indecent exploitation endured by enslaved African men. These narratives reveal that many of these men were forced to engage in sexual acts with their masters' wives when the masters were absent. That's it on that. When That's it on that. That's past the time stamp, I believe. So we haven't even scratched the surface on learning about what was done to us in history. But while we talking about foul and unclean spirits, talking about sodomy today, I bet you didn't know that. You didn't know that you were being sodomized. Your grandfathers was being forcibly sodomized by their slave masters. You didn't know that. And it's no coincidence that today we live in Babylon the Great, America, and they push Sodom because they were heavily involved in it. Give me Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And then you know what's crazy? If you don't agree with this country, if you don't agree with their terms, their terms include the false image of Jesus and sodomy. That's two of their terms. Or you can't get no money with America. That's why a lot of countries don't want to accept their policies because they know those two things is coming to their front door. Get Revelation 11, verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And the dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. This is talking about the Israelites. We are spiritually dead here. Don't know who we are. Some of our people are indulged in same-sex behavior because they don't know who they are. They don't know their laws. They don't know their culture. They don't know they were being raped. Read. Which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt. Now we understand why this verse said Babylon the Great is spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah because the same behavior was going on here as we've seen in the history clip and it's still going on here. In the history clip. Read. Well, also our Lord was crucified. It said spiritually called Sodom because Sodomite behavior is going on. And then it said Egypt because slavery also took place here, takes place here. And then it said also where our Lord was crucified. The image of Christ is crucified here. How? They've made thousands of of movies on Jesus, but they had a Caucasian's face on the front when the Bible says Jesus Christ is a black man. From there, let's get Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. 
I'm sorry. What are we talking about now? Sodomy in today's world. That's what we're talking about. Get Romans chapter 1, verse 25. The Romans chapter 1 and verse 25. Uh-huh. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature creator. Who so who did that? The white man. He did that in today's society. He made a white image of Christ and made you worship that more than the real creator. Read. Who is blessed forever. Amen. Uh-huh. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. What were the vile affections that our people were given up to because they didn't want to worship the one true God? Read. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. The women started to deal with one another. Read on. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. The men started to deal with one another. Why? You refused to follow the one true God, so God gave you up to your vow affection. That is a vow affection. Jump down to verse 32. Verse 32. Who know me the judgment of God, that with, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. So it said, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which do such things are worthy of death. The law tell you, you do those things, you are worthy of death. Read on. Not only do the same. Not only those that participate, but who else? But have pleasure in them that do them. America is the biggest supporter of same-sex behavior, and they push it on other countries, on other people, and on other races. Our people don't even see sodomy as a weapon they use on our people. They want our children to grow up in same-sex. You can show that image real quick. That needs to be their image because this is they are the biggest supporters of this. From there, get 1 Peter 4 and verse 4. Then we're going to get some visuals for you. Because we talk now we're talking about sodomy in today's world. First, we showed you God is against that. Then we showed you examples where it took place and God was not fond of it. Now we're talking about sodomy in today's world. Get 1 Peter 4 and verse 4. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 4. Wherein they think it strange that ye run, that ye run not with them. To the same excess of riot. That's why we need to pray for the kingdom. In this place, they think you're strange when you don't support that behavior. They ostracize you. They villainize you when you are not fond of that. When you don't want your children participating in that. You're evil. You're negative. You hate people. All because you will not accept vile behavior. Read on. Speaking evil of you. What do they do? Speaking evil of you. They speak evil of you when you don't accept that. Who is the biggest supporter? America. In America, you are spoken evil of. From there, give video to them. These going to be some quick videos. Just want to show you this. What is going on here? Let's see. Then the doors burst open. The king and queen walk through. There's our precious daughter. If they did not know what love Stop. meant, who would? Pause it. Those are drag queens reading to children. Where's the threshold? Where are the morals? Where is the decency? There is none. This is evil. Evil. Pure evil. Why would your mind even form to have men dress up in women's clothes and read? I believe those are kindergartners. What world are we living in? You was going to say something? Yeah, we living in that same world where back in Genesis, where they were so burned in their lust that they was beaten aggressively down the door to have their way with the angels. This is the same thing we, man we manifested in the way that they move. They not moving as aggressive, but it's still the same spirit because they want their way and they're going to get their way. And if they don't get their way, they're going to cancel. 
That's that's disgusting. And this time they had political power. Right. That's the thing. Back then it was sexual abuse. They banged down the door. Today they have political power to bang down your children's doors, bang down the uh, education system, to bang down the doors of your the workplace. They have political power now. It's a spirit behind it. You could drop it. Let's get video three. We're going to be real quick with these. Just needed to show you the visual. Now, what is this right here? I'm going to explain it. This brother here, I believe this is Uganda. He's not having that crap. He's refusing to accept that in his country. But understand, he's going to face repercussions. Press play. We will have our morals. We will protect our children. And we are making this law. We are making this law for ourselves. We are making this law for our children. We are making this law for the children of our children. This country will stand firm. And once we pass, I can tell you, Madam Speaker, we are going to reinforce the law enforcement officers to make sure that homosexuals have no space in Uganda. This house will Pause not... It. Pause it. You could drop it. But understand, because that brother is standing up, what's going to happen? What is he going to face? Embargo, sanction. You're not getting no money with us. You said your country not accepting what? You're not getting no money with us. And you ain't finna sell nothing. All because he won't run to that same excess of riot. This is the world that we live in. I just wanted to show that because we're talking about sodomy in today's world. I cannot get to this clip any more quicker. Get video four. Let's get video four. Video four is very special, by the way. Let's blow this up. I want to read the title. Thousands March in Jerusalem. Pride Parade. Now, wait a minute. Amalek, you say that you are us. You say that you are a Jew. Why are you having a pride parade in the Holy Land? Press play. Press play. You could drop it. We don't need to see no more. I guess because they put the six-pointed hexagram on the flag, it made it holy. Oh, but go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought they said that they were the people of God. That's what they said. I thought they said they keep the Torah. That's what they said. But we read in the Torah, let's go back to Leviticus 18 and 22 real quick. What did the Bible say? What did God say before he gave the Israelites the land? What did he say? The book of Leviticus, chapter 18 and verse 22. Come on. Thou shalt not lie with mankind Come on. as with womankind. God said, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. That's the Torah. Come on, read on. It is abomination. Read on. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. To defile thyself therein, neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. Come on. It is confusion. Jump to verse 25. Verse 25. And the land is defiled. And the what? And the land is defiled. And the what? And the land is defiled. But they fighting for the land right now. Right? They fighting for the land right now, and they say it is defiled with Palestinians in it. But God said if you commit that act, that the land is defiled. Come on. Therefore I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. Come on. And the land itself vomited out of her inhabitants. What would the land do? Vomited out. out of her inhabitants. And guess what? It's going to do it again. It's going that's to right. vomit you out. And that's future prophecy. But God does not want that in his land. That's the point. But if you claim that you're the Israelites, I'm not going to change the top of the class, but God don't want that in the land. Period. And that's a telltale sign that you know they're not the people of God. Revelation 2, verse 9, real quick. And then we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. So right now, we're talking about sodomy in today's world. That's sodomy in today's world. It was another clip I wanted to get, but I had to make sure we weren't too long-winded. It was a mother allowing her son i don't know what she calls it special time where he twirls around and dresses and i believe it's a black woman a black mother maybe another class 
This is sodomy in today's world, being pushed on our people and our children. But Revelation 2 and verse 9, please. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh huh. I know thy works and tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich. He's talking about who? The real Jews, the real people of God. They are in poverty, but they are rich because they have everlasting life, rulership promised to them. Read on. And I know the blasphemy. He knows the what? And I know the blasphemy. Blasphemy is lies. The lies of what? Of them which say they are Jews. Our people are not saying that they are the Jews. Only when they wake up and repent and learn who they are. All throughout the world, Amalek, you are saying that you are us. What does Jesus the Christ say? And are not. Uh-huh. But are the sinners of Satan. Christ said you're lying and you're the devil. The Bible speaks of only the devil would have a pride parade in the Holy Land. From there, let's switch gears now. What are you going to, I'm sorry. What you gonna, I want to pull out one script because we're still dealing with sodomy in today's time, right? Let me get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14. Go because ahead. back then I was traditional. We've been reading about traditional sodomy, right? Mm -hmm. Man on man, woman on woman. And it's still like that, but it's much more depths to this to Satan. There's much more depths to the evil, and we're gonna read about it because we read in First Peter four and four where they think it's strange that you don't go after their way, and they call you a hater. They say you are a hate, and they put hate crimes against you, right? But watch this: Wisdom of Solomon chapter fourteen, verse twenty-three. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter fourteen and verse twenty-three. For whilst for whilst they slew their children in sacrifices. Uh -huh. Or use secret ceremonies. Or may revelation. I'm sorry, read verse 22 first. Verse 22. Uh-huh. Moreover, this was not enough for them. Uh-huh. That they erred in the knowledge of God. And that's what goes on today. Our people err in the knowledge of God. You have pastors today are coming out the closet saying that they are homosexuals and that they are beloved by God. They err in the knowledge of God. Come on. Talk about have you been swallowed. Stop right. it. Come on. But where at? They live in the great war of ignorance. The great what? Great war. This Christianity is a war of ignorance. It's a war against your soul. Come on. But they call it peace. It's going to say it. Come on. Those so great plague call thy peace. They call that peace. They call the LGBT community peace. They say if you don't accept us as we are, you are a hater. But if you do, that's peace. Come on. For whilst they slew their children and sacrifices. Come on. Or used secret ceremonies or made revelings of strange rites. They kept neither lives nor beverages any longer under fire. That's what happens today. We keep neither our lives nor our marriages undefiled. They promote same-sex marriages. Yep. You defile yourselves in sodomy. It's no longer undefiled. Now you try to blur the lines between marriages. Read on. But either one slew another treacherous. Jump to verse 26. Verse 26. This quiet thing of good men. Come on. Forgetfulness of good turn. Come on. Defiling of souls. Defiling of souls. Come on. Changing of time. What's that word? Changing. Of kind. Meaning what? You're changing your sex. You got men cutting off their rods. Women folding up their vaginas trying to put a rod on them. You're changing your sex. Bring it out. They didn't have the technology to do that back then. Solomon is talking about what's going on today. That is going on in Babylon the Great, spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what he's talking about. People are changing their sex nowadays. And it is evil. And it is a great Plague and war of ignorance, and you need to repent. Pray y'all take heed to that. That's what's going on. But we're going to switch gears. What is the root of sodomy? Because some brothers and sisters have been raped, have been molested. Give me video five. Now, we're going to go through these videos. They ain't long. These three videos ain't long. But now... For those that battle this, those of you that experience this, you have to overcome this. You have to get over this. Play. 
You wrote me. Tell me why you wrote me. Just the non-existent relationships. Rita being, you know, absent. Who's Rita? Uh, my biological mother. You call her Rita? Yes. Do you know her? No. So take me back for a moment. You grew up in foster care from 3 to 12. No. 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 You were adoptive parents. Yes. Uh, so what happened, we were taken from, uh, me and my twin sister were taken from Rita uh, as soon as we were born. And we were placed in the foster care system to begin with. We spent like 11 years, and then eventually some lady adopted us. And how was that? It was cool for the time being, but um, at that same time, she said, you're gay, and I know it. And uh, we're going to send you somewhere to pray to gay away from you. How old were you? At this time, I was uh, probably like 15. When Who taught you about sex? Well, I wasn't taught about it. I was just told what to do when it came to that. Like at a younger age, they would force me and my siblings to perform sexual acts on one another. On one another? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. On, on your, the, your, the siblings? The four of us. You, William. Michael. And Michael. Kader. And Kader. So that's how you learned about sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where was your mother? Somewhere. And you don't know your mother's story at all. No, I have no feelings towards her at all. Like, I, if she was to die tomorrow, I wouldn't. And it hurts me to even say that. If she was to die tomorrow, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel anything. And that hurts because I don't think anyone should feel that way towards someone that gave them birth. Beloved, she gave birth to you. She did not give you life. She truly did not give you life. All right. So before we go to that video, some brothers and sisters have experienced that. Some of you that were, that are, or were involved in that, that was the pathway or the gateway to how you ended up in that behavior. But you must get past that because this is the background of a lot of our people that's in that behavior, in same sex. This is the background of it. From there, let's get the next video. Like I said, these videos are very quick, but I want you to hear these situations. A lot of us, before you play that, a lot of us, we could have ended up in foster care. Foster care is very brutal. You don't know how you're going to end up or where you're going to end up. You don't know if you're going to end up in, in uh, caring hands, I should say. Play this clip. 17, it was some of the toughest times of my life, but the best lessons came from that. Wow. <laughs> it is. Sometimes, believe yeah. it or not. Yes. When you talk about molestation, mm -hmm. which is something legally a lot of people don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. It's always this thing that's like swept under the rug. Yeah. But so many young girls and boys. Yeah. And I was molested by a woman. Stop. I was Stop. She said she was molested by a woman. What you must understand, demons ain't gender specific. A lot of times we think it's always a man, a man, a man, a man that will prey on a child. A woman preyed upon her, a woman. But these things happen to our people in this our people, when these things happen to them, it shapes the rest of their life. Some of y'all been through this. You must get past it, and we're going to help you. Play. My uncle's wife mm -hmm. from 7 to 10 years old. Yes, right under my parents' nose. They mm. had no idea. And they had no idea. And it happens a lot now. It does. <laughs> Was it difficult for you to talk about? Good drop it. She said she was molested by her uncle's wife from seven to ten years old. These are the childhood traumas that shape people for the rest of their life. From there, let's get the last video. Now we're going to get a video where she's sitting down with her daughter. Play. I was 
sexually abused before. Yeah. Um, I used to get babysat by a family friend, and it was a girl. And she took me in the bathroom, and then she used to put her mouth on me and stuff. And I came home with no underwear, you know? And my auntie was like, what happened to your underwear? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. How old were you when this started? Uh, I was probably like four. Are you okay? Hmm. It's very painful. I had to kind of replay what happened to me and how it happened. And I just saw my baby, you know, in that same position. And uh, it's not good. At what point did you start singing with the group and traveling and all that? 19. 19. Yeah. That's right around four years old, which is right around the time that this happened to you. I'm sorry. It's not your fault. Stop. Stop. So what happened was, as y'all know, this is, uh, I can't remember her last name, but she goes by Lily. She's part of the group SWV. So when they was at their height, she was leaving her daughter with somebody that she trusted while she was going on tour. She was just starting her music career. But little did she know, this is what was happening to her daughter. Uh, from there, get Deuteronomy 22, verse 25. So what? why did I play these videos? This is the background of a lot of our people that end up in these lifestyles. I don't even like to say lifestyles because no life comes from them. These are the backgrounds of what happens to our people that end up behaving like this. If you sit down, if you're able to get through to them and talk to them, that's the background of it. But what we're going to do now is go through the scriptures and help you get over that. First, you Deuteronomy 22, verse 25. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 25. But if a man be, but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her, and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die. But as to the damsel, thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Read on. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. For he, for he found her in the field, uh -huh. and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. Why we go there? What you must understand, when rape and molestation take place, a part of a person dies when that happens to them. That's why the Lord said, you slayeth them. When you do that to somebody, you're killing part of them. That's why they don't be right after that in the head mentally. They be messed up. And not all brothers... Go down the same sex path. Sometimes brothers be mentally unstable, ready to blow up, can't control themselves, always ready to defend themselves. Why? Because they had a traumatic experience. So we must understand that as what? Brothers and sisters come in. They may be dealing with things. We got to understand how to help them heal. So God does not condone that. Under Moses, if you committed that act on a person, you had to die right there because you were killing a person's soul. You were slaying a man. They not physically dead, but you was killing a spirit when you did that. That's why a lot of our brothers walk around the way they do not. Even some of the ones wandering around with the guns, sit down and talk to them. Here they pass. Some of them had verbal abuse, physical abuse, and even some sexual abuse. You'd be surprised. Give me Genesis 34, verse 1 and 2. What are we doing? We showing God don't condone that. Then we're going to give you some scriptures on overcoming that, healing from that. Genesis 34, verse 1 and 2. The book of Genesis, chapter 34 and verse 1. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. 
And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, priest of the country, saw her, he took her and lied with her and defiled her. Dinah was gadding abroad. That's why if you got daughters and sons, they shouldn't be roaming around by themselves. You got to instill that in them, especially young girls. Dinah was gadding abroad, and what happened? Shechem saw her and raped her. Jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that the two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the male. Jump and down to verse 31. Verse 31. Uh-huh. And they said, should he deal with our sister as with a harlot? So we pretty much fast forward through it real quick. They slew all the men in that village because our forefathers did not condone rape. They did not condone that behavior. And Shechem was dealing with her as a whore. You take a whore, you force yourself upon a whore. You snatch a whore up whenever you feel like it. So it blows my mind that brothers will even teach rape. You out of your mind. Our forefathers did not condone that. Under Moses, you had to die if you did that. From there, Philippians 3 and 13. Because our brothers and sisters who went through this, you got to heal. Don't use your childhood trauma as your crutch to behave unseemly, as your crutch to abuse yourself, as your crutch to act wild, as your crutch to go out here and do all manner of wild things because you have not gotten over the trauma. That's not going to help you. That's going to make you worse. I was reading an article. It said, it was talking about the young man that that happened to. It said they live risky lives. They take risks sexually, uh, with drugs, alcohol, all because what? That childhood trauma. Philippians 3 and 13, please. The book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. What do you have to do? Read. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, uh -huh. but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Brothers and sisters, you must forget that thing that is behind. If you went through molestation, if you went through rape, that should have not been your defining moment. Let it go. Let it go. You didn't have to let that be your end. Use it as fuel to push you forward. Okay, that happened to me, but I'm not going to let it break me. Read on. Forgetting those things which are behind. And what? And reaching forth into those things which are before. What's the things that are before? The kingdom of God. How are you going to be effective if you don't let that go? How are you going to be a husband, a father, a brother, a prophet if you don't let that stuff go? How are you going to be a wife, a mother? Help raise up the young women, the young daughters of Sarah. If you don't let the trauma go, let it go so you can grow. You will not grow. You will stay stagnant. And eventually, if you don't get over that, it's going to cause you to sin against God. From there, get Sirach 40 and 1. Because you may say to yourself, well, I don't understand how that happened to me. I don't understand why I have to go through this. Why was my life like this? Sirach 40 and 1. The book of Sirach chapter 40 and verse 1. Great travail is created for every man. What did the Bible say? Great travail is created for every man. Great travail, childhood trauma, hardship, anguish is created for every man. You don't know what nobody done been through when you come in the congregation. They ain't wearing it on their sleeve. You can't wear it on your sleeve. You can't let that dictate your life. How are you going to be effective for God if that's always on the forefront of your mind? You not. Read on. And in heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Uh-huh. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb uh -huh. to the day that they return to the mother of all things. Meaning what? We're going to go through things from the day that we born to the day that we die. 
You don't get to pick and choose. That's your hardship that you went through. Guess what? God probably allowed that so you can help others. Overcome it. Heal from it. Because it might be somebody else coming to congregation that been through that, and you can help them. From there, 2 Ezra 7 and 8, 7 and 18. You got to let that stuff go. A lot of y'all, that's the root of why you was previously involved in those things. Some of y'all battle those thoughts. It's, it's, it comes from what? That childhood trauma. But you got to let it go. You a new creature in Christ now. Let it go. Second Ezra 7 and 18. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 7 and verse 18. Uh-huh. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. Uh-huh. And hope for why. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things, and yet shall not see the why. So what is that saying? Those that keep the commandments, they're going to go through hard things, but they're going to have the kingdom to hope for because they're keeping God's commandments. That's what you have. If you endure and keep the commandments, you have the kingdom waiting on you. In the kingdom, it ain't going to be no more trauma. That's what you have waiting on you. Read on. Hold on. It said, but the wicked, read that. For that they have done wickedly, have suffered the straight things. So the wicked have went through hard things, but what? And yet shall not see the why. The wicked of our people that refuse to listen to God, they will not see the kingdom of God. They going to go through those hardships and they ain't going to have nothing to look forward to. You don't have that if you in this truth. That's not you. You in this truth, you got the kingdom to look forward to. They have nothing to look forward to because they love that life of sin. So they're going to die in that sin. But you who striving to keep the commandments, that's what you got waiting on you. Everlasting life, rulership, no more pain, no more sorrow. You just got to endure. But holding on to this trauma, you're not going to be able to endure. From there, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. The greater cloud of witnesses is in chapter 11. He named all the forefathers that stood tall, that endured through their hardships. That's supposed to be your motivation. Read on. Let us lay aside every weight. What is the weight you need to let aside? That childhood trauma. Damn, you 25 now. Let it go. You 30 now. Let it go. You 44. Let it go. You was five when it happened. So what? Let it go. Or you will not progress. You will go backwards. Read on. And the sin which doth so easily beset us. And the sin which so easily beset us. If you was previously involved in that behavior, if you do not overcome that, it will overcome you and you will not get the kingdom of heaven. You telling me these things you battling in the flesh is worth everlasting life, missing out on it? No. Repent. And if you struggling with that, let that trauma go. That's a weight holding you down. It's just like an anchor. They use an anchor to stop a ship. When they drop the anchor, the ship can't move. That's what that childhood trauma doing to you because you won't let it go. From there. That's it on 12 and 1? No, sir. Read on. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You need to finish the race that is set before you. What is the race? You trying to get the kingdom of God. You keeping the commandments to the end, getting what you was promised to you. Read Revelation 21. Let that motivate you. Let that comfort you. Let that be your healing. You ain't going to have to deal with this stuff we go through in this life no more. It's something better than this, brothers and sisters. Let that trauma go. That's it on that? Yes, sir. From there. Get 2 Ezra 16 and 76. Because we understand. Air last one of us in here got a story, got a background, got trauma that we went through. But the difference is 
the brothers and sisters that you see moving, they, they not wearing that on their sleeve. They not holding on to that. You see them growing, prospering. It's some brothers and sisters, you will have to sit down and talk to them in order to even know they went through all that. Because they ain't letting it stop them. They ain't letting it phase them. Read that. Let me start at 75. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can. Go ahead. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your God. Read that again. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your God. It said, be ye not afraid, neither doubt. We have to trust in the most high. You got to trust. You got a God that's on your side, that chose your race. To be his chosen. Read on. And the guide of them who keep my commandments. God will guide you. He's a guide to those that keep his commandments. You think you keeping God's commandments and you ain't going to be able to get over this, this childhood trauma? No, you can't get over it. You apply the scriptures. You fast. You pray. You meditate on things that's going to uplift your spirit. You cast that thing behind you. You press forward towards the mark, you will get past that. But if you wallow in your sorrows, if every time you try to move forward, you're always thinking about what happened to you back then, you're going to go backwards. Read on. And the guide of them which keep my commandments and precepts. Read on. See if the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down. We cannot let our sins or past trauma weigh us down. Read on. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Those of y'all that battle that, you cannot let that iniquity lift up itself. If the iniquity rises, you fall. Let that sink in. If the iniquity that you are fighting rises, you fall. You have to rise, and that thing got to fall. Read on. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sin. If you become bound, if you become attached, if you become wrapped up, if you become devoured by your sin, by that thing that you are fighting, what will happen? Read. And covered with their iniquities. You become covered with that sin. We're talking about sodomy today. You become covered with that sin. Read. Like as a field is covered, like as a like as a field is covered over with bushes. When a field is covered with bushes, you can't walk through that field. You have to try to cut through the grass, the bushes, the weeds. You're not finna walk through that. It's un it's untouchable. You can't be reached. Once you get to this point, you can't be reached. The sin has overtaken you. Read on. And the path thereof covered with thorns. That no man may travel through. If you allow your iniquity to rise up and overtake you, ain't going to be no getting to you. You're going to become reprobate. That sin is going to take full control of you. And then what? Read. It is left undressed. Uh-huh. And is cast into the fire to be consumed therein, therewith. Nothing but eternal damnation, torment. You telling me? You willing to give it all up for that? No, you better fight. That's why leadership say never give up, never give in. Don't just chant it. Don't just write it down. You got to apply that to your life or you will be bound with your sins and you will get that lake of fire, that judgment. So you must overcome that, brothers and sisters. You must overcome that. You can overcome that. Do not let that rule your life. All right? So I pray that's it for, for today. I pray that that was edifying for you. I pray that it helps you. I hope that you understand that is a vile, that is a foul and unclean spirit. And if you do not overcome it and it overcomes you, you will suffer judgment. My fast right quick. Go ahead. Um, let me get First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Just to land back on you on that, land back you. Let me get uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Read that. 
the book of First Peter, chapter 5 and verse 7. Casting all your care upon him. Read it again. Casting all your care upon him. So that's what we as a people supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be casting all of our care, all of our worries, the, the heavy burdens and yokes that we have on our minds that's weighing us down. We're supposed to cast all of our cares upon the Lord and trust that he has our best interest at heart. We have to learn to let those things go. Come on. For he careth for you. For God careth for us. He looketh at us more than the sparrows or any fowl of the air. You got to believe that. And if you believe that, you will be able to let it go. Give me Sirach chapter 30 and verse 21. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 and verse 21. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter, Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 30 and verse 21. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. Read it again. Give not over thy mind to heaviness. So this is what God tells us to apply. We're not supposed to be giving over our minds to heaviness. Giving over our minds to burdens, to things that we cannot control. Things that we cannot change. You can't go back into the past and change the past. You must continue to press towards the mark. You must continue to push forward. Like the officer said, you can't let your past define you. We can all change whether what direction we, we take our lives. You can change anything in the next six months, 12 months, all by changing the way you think, the way you handle matters, the way you de decide your decision making. Come on. And afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. You see that? Because a lot of us would do that. We would afflict ourselves in our own counsel. You're destroying yourself. And what happens when you afflict yourself in your own counsel? Give me verse uh, 24. Verse 24. Envy and wrath shorten thy life. Shorten it shortens life. your life. Because you're so heavy laden with wrath of something that happened to you way back when ago. Way, way, way back a long time ago. You got that wrath. You got that anger. If my mother was just there. If my father was there. If somebody was there to protect me, so now you mad. Every man or every person you come around, you can't form any kind of uh, valid relationships, solid relationships, because you can't let it go. You got that root of bitterness spraying up in your spirit. Read that part again. And the enraved shorten the life. What's going to happen? You're going to shorten your lifespan. When you're supposed to be in your youth and your prime and youthful, now you look 10, 15 years older. Now you're dying of stress. you causing heart attacks. You're getting strokes. You fell out due to stress. Come on. And carefulness. And carefulness or worry. Come on. Bringeth age before the time. It bringeth age before the time. Now your youth is withering up. But what are we supposed to do? Read verse 23. Verse 23. Love thine own soul. What the Bible say? Love thine own soul. Learning to cast your cares upon the Lord, upon the Lord is you loving your own soul. You letting those things go is you loving your own soul. You being able to get over those traumas are, is you loving your own soul. That's right. Allow God's words to be your therapy. Allow God's words to comfort you. There was something more to look forward to. There was more hope and faith and something, a better reward for us to look forward to. But you got to believe that. And if you don't believe that, you will not be able to get over it. Come on. Love thine own soul and comfort thy heart. You see that? Comfort your heart. How do we comfort our hearts? That's Romans 15 and 4. We get comfort by the scriptures. Come on. Remove sorrow far from thee. You see that? You have to remove those traumatizing thoughts far from you. You have to learn to let those things go. Those sins or those, th those heavy laden burdens that you have on you, you have to be able to let them go. Come on. For sorrow have killed many. Sorrow have what? For sorrow have killed many. Worry or stressing over things that you cannot control, it have killed many. Come on. And there is no profit therein. There's no profit therein. Give me that in Psalms 119 verse 172, I think it is. No, 127 verse 2. That's what it is. Psalms 127 verse 2. You're going to say the same thing. Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, chapter 127 and verse 2. 
It is vain for you to rise up early. Uh huh. To sit up late. Uh huh. To eat the bread of sorrow. Uh huh. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Read it again. It is vain for you to. Or there is no profit therein for you. Come on. It is vain for you to rise up early. To be up early in the morning. Read. To sit up late. Sit up late. Come on. To eat the bread of sorrow. Doing what? Stressing over things that you cannot change. You stressing over something. You losing sleep. You rising up early in the morning trying to eat comfort food. Trying to drink your sorrows away down the bottle, chasing a bottle over things that you cannot change. It's vain. It's no profit to dwell on it over something you cannot change. The Lord says, let it go. Have some rest. Last scripture, Matthew 11 and 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 11 and verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Read it again. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. This is, this is us casting our cares upon the Lord. He says, come unto him, all ye that are burdened and heavy laden. Come on. And I will give you rest. He will what? And I will give you rest. That's what, that's what Christ came for, to give us rest. But we got to believe that. And when we believe and we, we start to comfort ourselves with his words, you will have rest. You will to learn, uh, let those things go. Okay? So I pray y'all have, have been edified. That's it. Our praise to the most high. So we pray that y'all got something out of this class. Again, this class was to show us what's going on and to help y'all that's dealing with that spirit so y'all understand it's a foul and unclean spirit. It's past traumas that happened to you that may have led you down that path. You can overcome those things. You must overcome those things. All right? I'm Officer Asa at IUIC Chicago. I was here with Officer Yokonon, Officer Judah. All right, most high Christ bless y'all. That's going to conclude the class.